All right. Hi, everybody. Like Carly said, uh, my name's Connor. I'm going to be taking us through our little slideshow here about virtual reality, uh, sort of what it is and how people use it. So let's get started. So we'll cover, like I said, a variety of sort of topics today. I'm starting with what is virtual reality. Um, we'll talk a little bit as well about the history of virtual reality, um, some different types of virtual reality and sort of how it's used, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of using virtual reality. So starting off, what exactly is virtual reality? So we can start with some definitions. Uh, virtual is defined as almost or nearly as described, but not completely or according to a strict definition. And reality can be defined by saying the world or the state of things as they actually exist, as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea of them. And those two words come together to describe virtual reality. Uh, virtual reality means basically experiencing a simulated world powered by technology rather than the real world. Virtual reality is common terminology used uh, when computers generate a 3D space or environment that allows the users to enter a false, or in this case, virtual reality. So now let's look a little bit at the history behind virtual reality, um, some of the early examples of it and what it was used for. So starting off in 1929 with the Link Trainer. So in 1929, Edward Link created the Link Trainer, which was the first example of a commercial flight simulator. At the time, this device was entirely electromechanical, which is a very large feat. It was intended to fulfill the need for safer ways to train pilots. It was controlled by motors that linked to the rudder and steering column. A small motor-driven device mimicked turbulence and disturbances and provided haptic feedback for the user. Going on to a bit later, in the 1950s, we have the Sensoram. So 1950s visionary cine or cinematographer Morton Heilig built a single user console called the Sensoram. This device allowed the user to watch television in three dimensions, stimulating all senses. A bit later in the mix or the mid 60s, came the Sword of Democles. In 1965, the first helmet-mounted display prototype was created by scientist Ivan Sutherland and his student, Bob Sproul. The concept was to simulate reality to the point where no one could tell the difference from actual reality uh, from virtual reality. This, in theory, would allow users to interact with objects in the virtual world in a realistic way. This is a little bit of sort of a, an evolutionary timeline of virtual reality. So you can see there up in the early 50s, the Sensorama, like we mentioned, a three-dimensional television. And then going through the early 60s up to 1987, virtual reality became developed to a point where the technology is now available for practical uses. Um, sort of in the from the early to late 90s, we start seeing virtual reality integrated into more commercial uses like video games, as opposed to government and scientific projects. And generally from the early 2000s up into the current year 2021, um, we're seeing VR integrated in many facets of daily life, and it's being used more and more often. So let's talk a little bit about virtual reality in the present day. Today, 
virtual reality has many different uses. As it continues to develop as a technology, it holds the potential to change the future of many different fields. Some good examples of VR or virtual reality technology in the modern day are doctors employing VR to train medical students in surgery, treat patients' pains, and even help paraplegics regain bodily functions. Car makers are using virtual reality to test drive cars before building them and to create safer vehicles. Architects are constructing stronger buildings with the ability to test out environments in virtual reality, and travel agencies are using it to simplify vacation planning. Psychologists and other medical professionals are using virtual reality to heighten traditional therapy methods and find effective solutions for treatments like PTSD or of PTSD. And a more commercial example, like I touched on before, Walmart is now using virtual reality to train store employees by simulating real world scenarios. So now we'll talk a little bit about the different types of virtual reality that we're seeing uh, being used. So there are a couple of different ways that we classify the different types of virtual reality. We have what's called immersive virtual reality, non-immersive virtual reality, and virtual reality versus augmented reality. So starting off with immersive virtual reality. Immersion into virtual reality is the perception of being physically present in a non-physical or digital world. The virtual environment increases the immersiveness of the experience for the end user. So some common traits of things that you would see in immersive virtual reality are things like continuity of surroundings, the freedom of movement. Sometimes you have physical or haptic feedback, the conformance to human vision. That just means wearing the headset that lets you turn your head to move your vision, as well as sometimes they, it can offer physical interaction for the user. Now we'll look at some traits of non-immersive virtual reality. So commonly, non-immersive virtual reality is represented through large, lifelike displays that do not fully surround the user. Um, so these are things like you can see in the photos of large projector screens or televisions that give you basically a smaller window into a virtual world. And you can see this is used on things like exercise machines um, that can simulate taking you to different places. And it's also used for a wide variety of training applications like we mentioned earlier. And so this is window on world virtual reality. Um, desktop based virtual reality involves displaying a three dimensional virtual on regular desktop display without any specialized movement tracking environment. So now let's look a little bit at some of the different applications of virtual reality. Virtual reality is becoming ever more present in education, especially given the COVID-19 pandemic that has so many more students learning from home uh, where they may not be able to experience the classroom environment. Virtual reality is also becoming more and more mainstream in entertainment where they're slowly coming out with new um, sort of fads like virtual reality movies or 3D movies. Virtual reality is also being used heavily in healthcare, like we mentioned before. Uh, you can see here, this is a specific use of virtual reality um, where a surgeon can have a more three-dimensional view as to what exactly they're looking at and doing. Um, and this helps not only sort of with the physical aspects, but it's been proven that when you're seeing things with your own eyes, it makes actions a lot easier, especially when they're so finicky and delicate. 
and virtual reality is also great for scientific visualization. And this ties a little bit into, like we mentioned before, virtual reality's uh, use in education, but also for different research and scientific purposes. So now we're gonna look at a couple recreational virtual reality systems. Um, all of these systems here include a headset, which is sort of your window into the virtual world. And they also have that sort of physical interaction feature. And you can see that's usually done um, through the use of wands or controllers that you'd hold in your hand. And wherever you move them, it moves your hand in the virtual world. So starting off with the HTC Vive VR headset. Its design enables you to move physically around objects within the virtual space. With this system, you can enjoy a wide variety of games. The system also brings with it an adjustable headset and several eye relief adjustments. It is clear and comfortable to use. As you can see there, they have the website below. Next up is Oculus Rift VR. The advanced technology of this headset are coupled with low latency and precise constellation tracking system allows the utmost sensation of presence. The system is adaptable, comfortable, and customizable. And on top of all, it's easy to use. It usually extends to a virtual reality environment that's created to be the beginning point for your entire journey. Just one thing to note here, we mentioned the word low latency. That just means that there's um, a lower sort of delay between when you move your hand in real life and when you move your hand in the virtual world. And that just means uh, there's a less chance you'll get motion sick and it might be a bit less jarring. It's a lot smoother. So now we'll look a bit at the average cost for these headsets. Uh, you'll notice these are a bit pricey. Um, this is sort of a new technology. It's been being worked on, uh, like we know, since the 20s, um, but it's slowly coming into the commercial market. So you can see here, um, one of the cheapest options is the Oculus Go, which will cost you about 250 US dollars. Next up is the Oculus Rift S headset, which is a bit more pricey at 400 US dollars. Next is the Vive Cosmos, which will run you about 700 US dollars. And lastly, the Valve Index, which is almost 1,000 US dollars. Something important to bring up here is there is a reason that these headsets are different prices. Um, take, for example, the Valve Index on the right. I know sort of firsthand that that headset actually comes with a special controller that supports individual finger movement. Um, which is a lot finer than just sort of holding a wand like you would with some of the different controllers. And another good point to bring up is that uh, this is specifically for VR systems that support hand tracking. So that's like I said before, you would have the ability to move your hand holding a controller or a wand and you would see that move in the virtual space. Um, there are a lot of different options that are much, much cheaper if you're only looking for sort of that window into virtual reality. A good example is something called the Google Cardboard. The way that works is if you have a smartphone, um, you would order a Google Cardboard. I think it costs around 10 US dollars. Um, it's quite literally a piece of cardboard that you would then fold into a little headset that comes with a strap on the back. Uh, that comes with some lenses in it. And just using that, you don't have any sort of hand control, uh, but you do have sort of a, a reliable way to watch virtual reality videos on your smartphone or any sort of application that doesn't require the hand tracking. So now we'll look at some other examples of what exactly can you do with a VR system or why would you ever pay you know, upwards of $400 for a VR system? And the truth is there are a lot of things to do in virtual reality. You could say it's even limitless. So some examples, uh, you can adventure through Antarctica and the Machu Picchu with the National Geographic Explore VR. 
You can save the world from a zombie apocalypse with The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, which is a popular, or popular virtual reality video game. You can encounter and watch rare wild animals with Ecosphere. You can meditate, take a backcountry road trip, or ride in a hot air balloon with Alcove, and much more. Something that's not listed here that is actually personally one of my favorite things to do with virtual reality is to use Google Maps Street View. Um, because it's a 360 degree camera on Street View, um, you can go virtually anywhere in the world that has been mapped by Google and look around on the streets and see for yourself. So next we'll look at a little bit of a more specific example of what you might use virtual reality for, and this is virtual reality videos. So because this is a more commercial technology now and it's being developed, um, you see a lot of these sites like YouTube and other websites um, offer this non-immersive virtual reality experience that you can access at no cost on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. You simply play the video and then you can click and drag the screen to see different angles and views of the video. Um, and you put the video into full screen for the best viewing experience, assuming you're viewing this on a flat screen and not with a VR headset. There are some clickable links here in the presentation. So now we'll look a bit at the advantages and disadvantages of virtual reality. So the advantages of virtual reality technology. Virtual reality creates a realistic world that enables users to explore spaces and test situations without real world consequences. It is used for advancements in various fields, like we mentioned before, with education, medical, and scientific research. VR provides users with detailed, lifelike experiences that they may not otherwise be able to have or experience in real life. That would be things like travel, which we mentioned before, and also things like the roller coaster or scuba diving. And of course, one of the best sort of advantages of VR is it allows you to interact and converse with others. I know from experience, I have played with my friends in virtual reality. There is a wide variety of games and activities to do, provided that you and those who you'd like to play with both own a virtual reality headset. Uh, my favorite would by far be ping pong. And of course, with the advantages, we do have some disadvantages of VR technology. So starting off, the equipment can be very expensive to obtain. Um, it also might be a bit uh, more difficult to set up than some other conventional computer equipment. Um, the complex technology is not easily replicated. And unlike real world systems, virtual reality doesn't offer that flexibility in making changes to the preset program sequence. So that would be things like in the roller coaster video, we're stuck on the roller coaster. We can't take a walk and go around. Another big issue that has become sort of a hot topic regarding virtual reality is the potential for addiction and escapism. And this would be things like becoming overly reliant on artificial experiences in VR and sort of escaping the modern and physical world. Uh, many would claim that the inauthentic experiences of virtual reality are still not as good as the real thing, which while is definitely true, I'd say it's still worth giving VR a shot. And of course, with VR, because uh, most of the time you might be physically standing and moving your arms around and walking, um, it does have a bit more of that fatigue to it, as well, of course, with visual fatigue. Um, I can say from experience that you do get sore eyes if you spend you know, an hour and a half just sitting in the VR headset. Um, and so you need to take breaks, really. All right, thank you for listening. So that will be the presentation on virtual reality.